Hey everybody, Norm from Tested here. And Frank from Tested. And we are back at Frank's shop to learn more about the process you and your team go through to build some pretty amazing costumes. Yeah, we've got a really great crew on this one, as always. We showed you a little bit with Evil Ted making helmets, and now we're gonna show you Doug Stewart uh, with aging and browning up stuff. Yeah, Doug, who's your friend who's worked on like Hollywood productions. Yeah, he's worked on uh, Batman vs Superman, uh, X-Men Age of Apocalypse, uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane, he made that escape suit out of the what? shower curtain, um, and, uh, and the new TV show Roots. Wow. Um, so Doug, you know, he's, he works on a lot of big shows and he takes brand new clothes and makes them look old and lived in and worn. Or foam like this kind and of warbla. Yeah, like these so make warbla, it look like these warbla gauntlets. Make it look like metal. Painting and weathering. That's the topic of today's video. So let's go check in with Doug and see some of the process. All right, so this is Doug. And Doug, you turned those foam armor pieces, the helmet, the shoulder pieces, the gloves, right. into from mattress foam into what some of those metal. Um, what is and that? Warbler. The, the warbler, and it's the foam that's used on the floor? Yes. Floor foam. Yeah. Floor foam into what looks like old, hard metal. How right. do you do that? What is your weathering process? Well, you gotta look at metal first, I suppose. And see how it, you know, you can't just go chrome. You can't paint it just silver. I've seen a lot of spray paint, and spray paint doesn't hold. I used acrylic. Nova Acrylic makes some good metals. And so I base it out in like four or five different metals and just mix it, blend it through. And then uh, I actually took latex and just put it around these little chips here, let that dry and then paint over that. When you paint over the latex, it offers a little ledge when you pull it off and it kind of peels underneath the paint. Ah. And then sometimes it'll peel a little bit under the paint and I'll pull it and I'll push that paint back. So okay. it gives a, a dimension. Now, this is foam. These shoulder pieces, I believe, are a warbler. Is this, process is, this one's foam. Foam as well. This one's foam as yeah. well. Now, do you do any washes or dry brushing? Well, I do a lot of both. You can see all the brown through here is just brown washing. And all this is just hand painted. I didn't airbrush it. I don't think something that's that old should have the clean overall color and spray of an airbrush. This is the helmet and the shoulder piece for that knight character. And right. what you're working on now is the rest of his armor, his right. costume, it's which is the fabric. The fabric, now, yes. To match the fabric to the armor, what do you do? Well, that's a whole nother game. This is easy, you just paint it. And I could say the same thing, you could just paint it, but you kind of have to think about what that fabric is. Like this starts off as a nice, it's, it's pretty, it's yeah. a pretty fabric and it looks good all together, but brand new, when it's put together all brand new, it looks kind of Halloween. You're doing physical distressing right. of the fabric. Right, like I'll paint it and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll tear it. This is good fabric because it tears really nice. It's, it's really heavy duty. It's uh, upholstery. So I'll just slice it up and you know, I'll use something like this. This one pulls like that. And I've seen people, you know, want to do Hard cuts. And, yeah, and it's very cartoony, and it works for certain things, but if you want it to have a nice sort of ruined edge that's been through a few things, just give it a little bit of that. And I've done it here, and then I'll just pull my sanding block down and soften that. Right. So this piece is close to done, but there is a piece for this armor that still needs a bit of work. So can we get a we demo? We haven't even touched it yet. All right, so. so we'll go from just from being sewn right. and cut to right. looking battle-worn and tattered. Okay. Let's see that demo. All right, with this, I just want to put a little stain because it's so white. And this is just sort of the beginning. After getting this piece from the tailors, it's been washed, um, just to break it in a bit. Um, since this character is primarily a white knight, basically, I don't want to go too brown with the white and lose the white. Just tone it just a bit. A lot of times you hear, just drag it behind a car, but that, that would never work because then it would look like it was dragged behind a car. Real dirt doesn't stick to fabric, so it'll just fall off. I've had to uh, use Hollywood dirt to fake real dirt, and that's just a pigmented powder 
that stays in the clothing until you wash it out. This is permanent. I'll start with a lighter brown. I mix up a sort of a sun fady sand color and then toned it with that. And then I have a sepia here. Um, every fabric's different, but this one I feel like I'll put a little sepia in and it, it can be random. So uh, that's how I start that. All right, Doug, uh, you did airbrushing, which like you can start with that, you right. like that, that clean uh, patterning right. on there. Now it's hand brushing. Yeah, I'll just scrub some umber on there. Actually, my favorite color is Van Dyke Brown. Okay. Uh, I don't know why, it's just a really nice natural color. So I'll, I'll just go a little dry. And everything's a layer. You know, at first you look at it and you're like, I can see all those strokes and all that dirt. And you know, maybe it's okay, but I like to just put layers upon layers. Now you said the distribution was random. Random, but yeah. Isn't doing random difficult? Well, <laughs> in my mind it's random, but I guess now that you mention it, I'm, I kind of pay attention to where I'll get the most wear and tear. Mm. Um, Find that story. <laughs> right, exactly. I'll put a lighter layer on top of this and then go with another dark layer. Uh, and Alternate that's, between light and dark. And right, because okay. that's all aging is, is different colors are going into the fabric and staying. But maybe between the layers, I'll, I'll sand a little bit. Yeah, just bring a little tech, more texture on top by breaking that fabric. And you see, this brings out the texture of this particular fabric, which is kind of important for this, because otherwise it's really just flat. If you have this texture on there, that's just more story inside. Uh, I also try to hide modern technique on there, like mm -hmm. stitching. You know, if we needed to put holes in this, there's different ways to do that. If you have time and it's only a couple, you can cut them, you can blade them with a razor blade and it's a long process that way. Or you could use like a chemical that, that eats natural fibers. And it just, you, like for example, you brush that on, I did that. I brush that chemical on and then let it dry and then you iron it and that chemical has eaten the fiber and it's giving you a, a hole mm. that looks natural. We're not gonna do that here, unfortunately, but. So you're only working on one side of this costume right now. Um, do you think of it having to do all at once so it maintains the consistency? I would. Normally I would. Um, but for this, it's, it's easy enough to take this and move this. And since it's dirt and aging, it, this doesn't have to match that. It just has to be the same tones and colors. And that's easy enough. I've got plenty of that. Got it. There's, there's only like a handful of us in the Costume Union 705 who actually do this. You would think there's a lot of people, but there's really a limited amount, and everybody's always doing something. Like every movie you see now has aging on it, and it's got one of one of us from the 705 going in and spending you know two to six months rubbing dirt. All right, Doug. Uh, so let's recap what you've done so far, because it already looks pretty browned up. It is browned up. I browned it up. We took it to Brown Town. Uh, I'll put more layers on here. This is a good starting point. Mm. Uh, if we needed to stop here, I think this is nice. Uh, but I like to add, you know, crusty dirt, some holes. Uh, you started with that airbrushing around the edges, light airbrush right. base to turn that white to be you know, an off-white. Right, right. Uh, then with the brush, you went dark, light, dark. You went light colors on different fabrics. Right. Like on this, I'll go with more light colors and, and texture. Uh, like I started to tear this up a bit. Now you've done painting and weathering for TV productions, for movie productions. This is for a live event, for right. essentially cosplay. Do you think about weathering differently for when, how, how it's gonna be received and seen? Well, yeah. This will be walking around the public. Um, and you don't want it to look like it was painted. So you gotta be a little softer with it with like a TV production, nowadays with the HD, you kind of have to have the same thought. Mm. Um, if it's background, uh, like we'll have, you know, a hundred to a thousand background in certain movies and TV shows, then it's just a broad stroke sort of thing. Um, if it's, you know, on the screen 40 feet, 
you want to see that little loose thread on the buttonhole if it's if that's what it needs to be. Wow. Well, hopefully you guys out there will appreciate these costumes as they appear in this video and hope you meet in person. Every loose thread. Every loose thread was has, put there. Was put there and has someone like Doug put it there. Thank you so much Thank for you. showing us this process. Right. I'll let you get back to work right. and we'll have more videos from Frank's shop soon on Tessin. Until next time, this is Doug. I'm Norm. Frank again is working. We'll see you guys next time.